Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, seen Wednesdays on the Sports Collectors Daily Facebook page and the Great American Collectibles Facebook page. You can also listen to us on iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Spotify. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by the National Sports Collectors Convention and Sports Collectors Daily. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, go to sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now your hosts, Tom Zappala and Boston sports personality, John Mallory. Jam. <laughs> what, what's with the apple? Well, this, is hel- I'm hel- this is healthy. <laughs> In case I get hungry between breaks. <laughs> Are you kidding? You have a stupid bar over there. It's a protein bar. I didn't. I could have said, "What's with the dumb protein bar for a guy that's?" Just I mean, you're went not going to eat that on the air. How was your uh, your 96th college reunion <laughs> this past weekend? I was just telling. I was just telling the boys <laughs> that hey, who is that great voice? That great great VO leading into the show. That's, huh? the, that's a voice that's right the there. Let me tell you, infamous Dan Walken. <laughs> All right, let's bring Danny in right now. Dan Walken from Memory Lane. Hi, Daniel. <clears throat> Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, What's good. up, Dan? Hey, just living the dream, you know. Good. Uh, hey, Dan, by the way, Dan looks like the illegitimate love child of Howie Long and Bill Parcells, doesn't he? <laughs> there you he go. Does. <laughs> <He does. laughs> Welcome I'll to the you. Great American Collectible Show, Tom Zapp and my good friend, Johnny Mallory, affectionately known as JM. And don't forget, you can listen to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast platform. Uh, you name it, we're on it. Also, Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, so kind of all over the place. We are all over the place. Yeah, we're, we're really excited. People are actually starting to listen to us, like, over cocktail hours and stuff in their house. <laughs> it's a good time. You know, we instead sound- of watching, they're saying, Alexa, play the Great American Collectible Show. We sound better after a couple drinks. Absolutely. That's for sure. There is no doubt. No doubt. We have a great show today. Danny's going to be with us for the whole for the whole hour. In about a minute, we're going to bring in another good friend, Scott Russell from the Collector Connection. It's an all-star lineup. Yeah, we do. We have a good... You know why? Because these guys, they know their stuff. Frontline guys. Yeah. yeah. And then, at the, in the, the last segment, we're going to bring in Steve Verkman yep. from Clean Sweet right. Auctions, who has kind of a, a really... This is like his biggest auction because he's got a really rare Babe Ruth card that he's. Uh, we're going to talk about some amazing stuff. I saw it at the National. I was like, "Wow, really, really, really good." So let's bring in our friend Scott first. Scott Russell from the Collector Connection. How are you, Scotty? I'm good. How are you guys, Scott? You know Dan? Yeah. Right. Hello. Hello. How are you, Dan? Good. Good. How are you? Pretty good. Dan, oh. man, just a quick question for you with the brick. Are you in prison? Where, where are you? <laughs> uh, don't tell anyone. Um, this is actually the, the interior of my place. I decided to do a 30-foot brick background. Nice. Real brick. Wow. Nice. Very I missed, nice. You know, growing up in New York, we had brick homes. So I missed it. I'm in California, and I wanted that touch. So uh, now I got it. Very cool. I love it. Very cool. All right, Scott. I, I thought it was in a schoolyard. Or something. <laughs> Scotty, you have uh, you have a, an auction going on that ends when uh, Sunday the first. Sunday the first. Let's talk about one thing that I j- jumped out at me. You've got some really cool rare football cards. Talk about some of those cards. Yeah, I, you know, some good football cards. Um, this is our, we always call our September auction our football kickoff auction. So while we still have baseball, basketball, hockey, and all the other stuff, uh, we focus on doing better football. So, you know, we've got the Jim Brown rookie. Um, we've got a pack of 71, a cello pack of 71 tops, which is kind of cool. Uh, you know, some nice boxes, a little bit of everything. My actual favorite football stuff in the auction, though, is the publications. Uh, we have college and professional football programs back to the 20s. Uh, my particular favorite, sorry, it's fly. My particular <laughs> favorite is uh, Army Navy program the week before Pearl Harbor. Really? Wow. Uh, which is kind of November 29th, 1941, was the Army-Navy game. Very cool. As a matter of so, fact, you know, their lives are all just about to change. I have a, uh, I have a really, really good piece of memorabilia. It's a BC UMass program uh, from 19, I don't know when it was. And I think BC, I, seriously, I have it. I think the like, BC beat UMass like 69 nothing or something. <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous at the heights, at the heights. John, John, uh, JM's a BC grad. So. Right, right. Scott, where did you get, where, where, did, where did those programs come from, if you don't mind me asking? Um, a couple of different consigners. Uh, we have one guy who's actually kind of a, you know, I hate to use the TV term, but he's a picker. 
Uh, he goes around that he's mainly a comic book guy, but every now and then he stumbles on sports and he brings them to me and he just picks, he brings us boxes of stuff. Uh, a couple of auctions ago, we had the Columbia program with a you know, you know, somewhat well-known fullback Lou Gehrig in it. Um, you know, and he finds these things and picks them up for next to nothing because they're just in you know boxes of paper stuff. And so, so a lot of the, the good old stuff came from him. And some of it comes from collectors who know what they have also. But he's he's got a nose for it. What are some of the other highlights of the auction? Um, well, if you get into the other sports, yeah, we have like the Hank Aaron rookie, the, the Ernie Banks rookie. Um, something that's kind of lagging behind right now that your listeners may want to take a look at is we have a lot of really near sets. Like we're talking missing two or three cards from like the early fifties through the seventies. Uh, you know, so good partial near sets that only need a couple cards for completion. The one that sticks out in my mind is a 55 Bowman just missing Aaron and Mays. It's got its mantle, which is actually PSA graded. Um, you know, right now they're sitting at like a buck or two a card if you kind of spread the cost over the size of the set. So, so let me ask you, is it, I'm going to ask both of you this question. Taking the, the 51 Bowman, all right, I mean, whatever, <laughs> using that as an example, if the entire collection is not graded and then you, you, have, you get the mantle, you get the maze, is it worth investing the money to get the entire collection graded and then you want to go first, Dan? Danny? Sure, I absolutely not. I think that, you know, having those two key cards graded and then the rest of the set, if you grade every card based on PSA's prices today, you're not going to get returned. You'll be under the gun. But if if they were yesterday's prices, you know, that might be just obviously everything's depending on condition. But, you know, it'd be nice to see it all graded. But the price point is so tough right now that it's just not, it just doesn't warrant it. Scott? Scott? Yeah, I mean, my big thing, you know, what I always tell our consigners is you want, homo you know, homogeneity, you want a homogenous set. So if you've got your graded five mantle, your graded five maze, and the rest of the set looks X, you're good to go. You don't need to grade it. Interesting. Um, you know, if, if your set's an outlier from the key cards, and then I'd probably actually advise you to break it up. Uh, and then I think the only exception would be if you got like, you know, a true near mint, mint set. You know, if you're talking, you're going to grade the whole set that's going to come out over an eight average then you might make some money grading everything. Interesting. Boy, trying to predict that nowadays. It's, it's impossible. Scott, you have a December auction coming up. Is there anything that uh, you're looking for as far as consignments? Well, actually, it's the, the October auction. Oh, I'm the sorry. One that we're oh. doing the last-minute push for. It's our pre-war auction. Uh, you know, I think we're still the only ones doing a dedicated everything before 1941 auction we do twice a year. And we have some amazing stuff, but oddly, we don't have the stuff we normally have. We have a near T206 set, the better part of a T205 set, but we don't have the strip cards, the caramels, the, the Gaudis and the play balls. Um, you know, just some of the stuff that you normally think of as kind of lesser than the T206 and T205. So we're doing kind of a last minute call for consignments. I've hit up a couple of people and figured I'd share it with your listeners too. I mean, so again, for, you know, for listeners, this yeah. is an opportunity. If you have any of the Gaudis, any of those, uh, this is a good opportunity uh, yeah. to, to get rid of them if you're interested. I want to get both of you guys' opinion on this while we have both of you here. Um, Scott, you have some uh, Jim Brown, Joe Montana, Walter Payton in this auction. Yeah. Yeah, give me your thoughts on these. These are three, you know, watershed players in the NFL. I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, we hear enough about them in terms of memorabilia and cards. Well, you do about Brown. Yeah, a little, but not enough, but not as no, much I as agree. we should, maybe I because agree. of the short career or whatever. But that was my question, and both you guys can answer this. Where are they? What is their status in the industry right now? Scott, you can Out start. Out of those three, I think Brown's by far the biggest. Yeah. I have to agree. Yeah. Um, but even that being said, you know, like we have a lobby card from one of Jim Brown's movies that he autographed in the auction. Yeah. And it's sitting at like 40 bucks. Right. Now, if you found a similar player in baseball, which would have to be kind of like Mantle, you know, if you had an autographed Mantle lobby card because he appeared in a couple of movies, it, it would be hundreds, you know, on the first day. Right. And Jim Brown was certainly every bit the football player. I mean, for my money, Jim Brown's the greatest football player ever. So that puts him ahead of Mantle in terms of quality of player. So, you know, but, you know, football just has never been quite, you know, the popular you know, as popular as baseball. Yeah, interesting. But Danny, you can chime in on this. Yeah, you know, I I think we got about a minute left. Dan. All, all three of those guys have signed so much, 
in their day. Montana signs like Bob Feller or Pete Rose. So you know, <laughs> as far as the memorabilia is concerned, yeah. I think that, you know, they've just uh, there, there's just too much of that stuff out on the market. As far as their rookie cards, their PSA 10s went straight through the roof and then came down and have recently corrected themselves like they're down probably you know 50 60 percent like rice and montana and brady and all that right but you know what the the key to collecting football is, is the quarterbacks quarterbacks is where it's at yeah. you know peyton's also popular but he signed a boatload and you got to be you got to really be careful because there's someone in his camp that once he passed they were signing his name and put their holograms on it interesting you know? The other thing, Zab, I think, and with guys that those three guys, all their records have been eclipsed. As great yeah, as they were, point. people have passed yeah, them. So that could be another reason. Good point. Yep. Scotty, what is your uh, uh, website address? TheCollectorConnection.com. Very, very simple. The collector and if you want to talk about email, you want to email me about consigning, just info at TheCollectorConnection.com. And if anybody uh, can't remember that, you're welcome to text me, PM me, and I'll forward it to Scott. So uh, good luck, Scott. Thanks, gentlemen. Always right, a pleasure, care. buddy. Sign Always a today. pleasure. Scotty Russell from the Collector Connection. He always has extremely interesting items in here's, his office. Here's, here's a trivia question right? for uh, for both uh, Dan and you. Okay. So, do you know who the first? <clears throat> I'm gonna Ed Abaticcio was a T206 Is this, player. You're giving us the answer first. Well, no, no. Ed, what's Ab, Ed Abaticcio's claim to fame, Danny? He was the first to develop the Abaticcio pizza. He's the first. <laughs> right. That's right. That's where pizza came from, right. from the Abaticcio. And I've actually had Abaticcio with the cream sauce, with Alfredo sauce. See, it's yes, unbelievable. Alfredo here's, here's where, <laughs> this is where I shine, and both of you right. are, are bringing up your, your you know. <laughs> Ed you know, this is where we're trying to save the show. Ed Abaticcio, <laughs> Ed Abaticcio was is actually considered the first professional football player. Okay. Yeah. In the NFL, and and he was a part of the T two hundred six collection. He was a punter. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Was he a part of that Mayo plug set? Right. I uh, may have been. Uh, so, Scott's gone, so, so I don't, for the, I don't know. But the thousands of viewers we just lost, please come back. <laughs> I thought that was just a hell of a nice piece of trivia. All right, it's let's great. move on. Fantastic. Hey, Danny, is the hobby go is, in your opinion? Is the hobby going in the right direction? You know, we did over eight million dollars in our last auction that ended September 9th. I'll tell you, the hobby is great. It will always be great um, on a on a down market. You know, I think. You know, whether interest rates are at 8% or, you know, jobs are being lost, I think people still find money to buy collectibles because it just makes them feel better. They're on the hunt to fill a set or to get their favorite players. So I really think that the the hobby is very, very strong. And and let me tell you, it's going to get any, it's going to only get stronger with Michael Rubin, you know, his plans to kind of build a Comic Con type show. You know, so people that are sinking this type of five, six, seven, eight figure type money into our hobby to promote it, you know, I think it's it's just it's strong and it's not going anywhere. And the interest is being expanded all across the world. So I really think we're and, it, you know, it's also funny. It's back in the day. Hey, I collected. I buy and sell baseball cards. OK, great. You know, or we're on a plane going to a show and someone says, hey, still playing with your baseball cards? I'm like, yeah, we're just having fun, not knowing that we're carrying a couple million dollars worth of cards. But it's it wasn't that cool back then. Today, it's pretty cool. What are you doing? I buy and sell sports cards memorabilia. Wow, that's really cool. So yeah, very interesting. It ain't going anywhere. We've talked a lot about on the show about you know fanatics getting involved in the hobby and everything like that. And so from one getting what you just said, you're you're kind of okay with that. You you know when 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 big money comes in, when people of influence come in, when established sports related businesses come into it. And I agree with you if that's what you're saying that it's it's yeah. gonna it's gonna make the hobby thrive. It's gonna make the industry grow. I, yeah, I agree with you 100. percent It's I'll tell you, it's uh, it's becoming more and more popular. And why not have someone that really cares about the hobby that wants to come in 
and expand it, you know, all over the world, it's exciting and it's bringing interactive stuff to shows as well. You know, like we used to, like we have the, uh, during the Super Bowl and they have the NFL experience. I think that's where he's geared towards. I think that's his, you know, I'm not positive, but I think that's his goal to bring interactive, bring the father's son back to the shows and enjoy and collect and, and make certain products affordable to parents and kids. And then there's obviously the more expensive national treasures and panini type stuff that, you know, people are going to gravitate towards. But there's a little bit for everyone. And there's a lot of quality out there for, you know, anyone and everyone to buy. We are chatting with Dan Wilkin from Memory Lane Auctions. Danny, um, you just had a killer auction. Killer auction. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your next auction. Can you can you kind of share some of the tidbits that are coming down the pike? You know, I'm not sure really what. Our, our key pieces are we still have we're still about a month out from the uh the auction deadline for consignments but we do have it's interesting scott was talking about sets raw sets we do have a little run of some raw sets that are in really nice shape of 56 tops and then some of the uh all, like a lot of the key cards are graded um some really cool oddball type stuff like the strips um stickers from the 60s of mickey mantle and posters and the the uh, iron-ons of Manel Mays. I'm sorry, Manel Maris and Ruth and, or Koufax. <clears throat> just some really remember those draw like the cards that you pull down oh, and sure. it's like a win. So we have like a Garrig, a Manel, and a Ruth. You know, so there's some really oddball oddity type stuff. You know, as as well as the mainstream. Danny, what are you seeing, you know, your experienced eye when you're talking about auctions and, and what people are interested in, what you're getting bids on? We, we know that the Roots and the Gehrigs, that type of stuff is always going to be good, Martin, Otani, whatever. But what are you seeing in terms of trends? Um, you mentioned, you know, sets versus individual cards, contracts, tickets. Are you seeing something over the last few months, maybe leading into next year that people are now going after in terms of the type of items? Um, I'll tell you, the... Well, I've been saying this for only about a month, and I knew it would happen. We just sold a Gem Mint 10, a PSA 10 Jordan rookie, for 217000 with the BP. About six months ago, they were going for about 150, 160. I bid on one in another auction. I got outbid at about 175 with the BP. You, you are starting to see all of his rookie cards go up in value. We sold a wax box in the, in the last auction. You know that those dipped to about a hundred thousand, and now we sold one for one hundred and forty-four thousand. So trending, you know, I think Jordan's trending. I think it's a great time. You know, I'm really not for modern cards as much, but I really think that the, a buyer's market now for Otani. You know, after he's done with his surgery, I think he'll be back. Just yeah. To, you know, he'll be doing just fine. And you know, Trout's longevity. He's he's a lock Hall of Famer. Yep. So there are a handful of those guys, you know, that I think have already established themselves. I wouldn't roll the dice on new stuff as far as rookies are concerned. You know, Brock Purdy's 8-0 right now, but, you know, within the last season and this season combined, he's hot as hell right now. You know, look at Burrow. Look at Joe Burrow with starting off at 0-2 and, and they win last night. So it's – And he's banged so, up so, too. He's banged up too. Injury yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I, hey, Dan, um, you know, the T206 Wagner – Iconic card. Um, no one can afford one, but it's a very iconic card. It seems as though a couple of Wagners have really jumped to the forefront over the last year, year and a half. The M116 and the E90-2. Why? What is the reason for that? The name is Honus Wagner. If people can't afford three, four, five million and they're going to buy, you know, the last M116 Wagner we sold, I think the BP with that was about 52000 and, you know, that's I, I think people it's also the image that M116 image of Honus Wagner. But I think it's the household names that are, you know, it's the first inductees of like, you know, Ruth and Wagner and Cobb and Johnson and Matthewson. You know, you still have, you know, these real popular names out there and they're not printing anymore. Right. So you kind of know that you get you have a good grasp on the population of all that stuff that's out there. But Honus Wagner, you know, even his autographs, his government post signed government postcards and his signed canceled checks are a steal right now at like two, three, four grand. 
Good to you know. know. It's Good to the, know. Yeah. Good to know. Yep. All right, we're chatting with Danny from uh, Memory Lane. We're going to take a quick break. Hang in there. We will be right back. Are you a collector looking for that rare trading card or autograph ball or photo? If so, then PB Collectibles in Newport is the place for you. PB Collectibles has graded cards, raw cards, complete sets, and wax boxes of the stars of the future, today, and from the past. We also offer a large selection of both vintage and modern cards. So whether you're looking to add to your collection or sell it, visit us at PB Collectibles, 269 Spring Street in Newport, located across from St. Mary's Church. We are your neighborhood card shop and much more. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, mile high. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game-used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. And we are back here on the Great American Collectible Show. Listen, if you want to have an absolute blast at obtaining some great modern and vintage cards, you got to check out JRI Cards. Our paisan, Charlie the Iron Ripper Perino, along with Money Marco, the Dollar Dollar Girls, and the JRI Gang, give you the chance to participate in opening a graded, unopened, and sealed fresh wax or cello pack of your favorite sport or non-sport variety. It's easy. You buy in, Charlie opens the pack, and you get a pack fresh card. It's that simple. As a matter of fact, if you pull that special jewel, the guys at JRI Cards will even have it graded for you on the house. Featured in the LA Times, ESPN, USA Radio, JRI is the hottest card pulling show on the internet. 
Charlie and his staff make it fun, entertaining, and enjoyable with his collection of hats and sound effects. And don't forget that JRI donates a part of their proceeds to various charities. That's JRI Cards. Check out their exclusive breaks and events that everyone is talking about. They're always digging up cardboard treasures for a great hobby experience. Go to JRICards.com. Welcome to another Gax Moment brought to you each week by our good friend Paul Borges and PB Collectibles, your neighborhood card shop. Go to PB Collectibles to find that special card or piece of memorabilia. Today I'm sticking my toe into the modern card market with a simple warning. Buyer, beware. You know, we hear the word influencer. It's become very popular in today's culture. The same holds true in our hobby. Influences, influences. Some influences are very informative and some are very legit. Others, however, may not be looking out for your best interests, but rather their own. Got to keep that in mind. If you dig deep, you're going to see that some, not all, have relationships or a part of a larger investment group whose primary purpose is to drive up prices of a particular card. It's very, very important for you, the hobbyist, the collector, to do a little due diligence. And if you're going to take the words of an influencer, and please, there are some good ones out there, check them out. Check them out thoroughly. The modern market is very, very speculative, and some collectors have lost a lot of money flipping cards and made a lot of money flipping cards. So you got to be careful. Let's take a look at this card, for instance. Juan DeFranco. This guy has crashed like the Hindenburg and may not recover from his legal woes. Perfect example, that card was going for hundreds and hundreds of dollars when he came out as a rookie. Now you can't give it away. Next card. Fernando Tatis. He got caught, is now paying the price, or rather, are some collectors paying the price. You got to be careful. You can be a little speculative, but pay attention to what you're investing in. Justin Fields. This is an interesting one because last, at the end of last season, Justin Fields, he was the golden boy. His card was going to, it was going to explode. Now, with him playing more like W.C. Fields, his card is going down the chute. This is the image you should really pay close attention to. The players here, with the exception of Sandy Koufax, they're all gone. All right? Yet, every one of these cards and the players behind these cards continue to grow. You know why? Because they're gone. It's a solid investment. You grow slow and steady. The bottom line is look at the big picture and invest wisely. If you want to flip a modern card, good luck. But consider slow and steady. You will be much better off, in my opinion, and pay attention to the, quote, influencer that is advising you. And that's another Gax moment. Okay, we are chatting with our good friend, Dan. How was the apple? Excellent. <laughs> I just ate half of it. But. Dan, can you see that? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I love the idea that you're eating an apple because that represents New York. And, you know, knowing that John's uh, a Yankee okay, fan. Okay, so let's just get rid of this uh -oh. now. Uh -oh. I thought you were going to say because... I know how, because this dude's gotten help. This Dan, you're still doing your work. No, he's not. You, he's he's not. No, he Trust is me, like he not. he did. He's a I, healthy, I, you're I, a healthy I, guy. He's eating pizzas all no, day. No, he's not. I've seen him at I shows was, now. I he's, was in the gym for a while, yeah. and I go back tomorrow for the first time in like four months. I have not been good on that regimen, but guess what? We have the power to decide whether we're going to do it or not, and I'm going back tomorrow. Good man. Hey, I got to tell man, you brother. guys both the story, Dan, before we continue. I was telling JM before. Do you know Steve Lane? New Orleans Steve Lane? Um, Steve is a very, he, he's a very, actually, Steve has probably he's the most extensive great book Mickey now, uh, Mantle yeah, yeah. collection in the country, yeah. and he's got a book out. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of his memorabilia is at Yankee Stadium. Well, at the National Steve and I go back and forth because he is a Yankee lover and I am a Red Sox fanatic. He gave me as a gift a Mickey Mantle martini glass that he bought years ago at Mickey Mantle's restaurant. <clears throat> and we had a bet. That he bought or he... 
I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the bet was, if the Red Sox come in last place, I, on this show, am going to don a Yankees hat, a Yankees jersey, and I am going to mix a Tito's martini with some cheese and crackers on the air and sip it out of that goddamn Mickey Mantle martini glass, and Jim, you're going to join me. I am, at, and on a solidarity, I will wear a Yankee jersey as well, just to support you. But it seems to me, if we're eating and drinking on the air, you won that bet. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> very, very. Actually, you know something. Uh, our producer Chrissy is going to indulge with us. She doesn't know it yet, but we can. Well, she, she'll have a martini. No, Chrissy, us. you don't have to twist her arm. She'll join us. Yeah. All right. Listen, we are chatting with Danny. Danny Wilkin from Memory Lane. Dan, what is your opinion of Vaults. Tell me about this vault stuff. What is your opinion of that? You know, I think if we were talking vaults, you know, legitimate vaults, it would be the U.S. Mint. <laughs> and you know that your cards are going into That's right. the U.S. Mint. That's right. The, this, this vault thing is people, we have a vault, but not the vault that we're talking about. You know, a vault, they take the cards, they put them in a room. You know, and and they hold on to them, and you know, it just to me, I buy a card, I want to see it, I want to hold it, I want it to be in the collection. I don't want to send it out somewhere. I think if someone's going to be a stockbroker in our baseball card world, then I can see them doing it. But it's, I just, I'd rather have possession, you know, of my card, whether I'm buying and selling or collecting. Dan, this is a little bit of a two-parter. In the first part, I want to go back to something you said in the first segment when we talked about trends, and you mentioned Jordan. Why do you think Jordan now is spiking again? We know that the last dance kind of set him off during COVID and everything. He just, has, he just exploded with that documentary. Why do you think now all of a sudden Jordan is spiking again? I think because people understand the population report. They understand there's 330-some-odd PSA 10 Jordans. I think that the unopened wax boxes that have the Jordans in, in there, you know, people know that there are about three or four of those Jordan rookies in there. People say, well, I'm going to op open up a pack. I'm not going to get three or four tens. But at least that's part of, you know, knowing that the, these boxes are really scarce. Jordan is the greatest of all time, you know. So I think there's more interest coming in from other sectors, other, you know, parts of the world you know, that really want to, they, they, they want a, a PSA. They want the most perfect Jordan or they want the scarcest Jordan. And I mean, 330 plus PSA tens. It's not a lot for the amount of fans that are out there that, that can afford, you know, there are a lot more than 330 people that can afford a quarter million bucks for a rookie, even though one went for 740,000, right. you know, two of those back in the day. And just part two of that, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there, okay. looking ahead, is there a card, a year, a set, a player that maybe you see on the horizon that, that could maybe not get to the Jordan stratosphere, but you think might grow in popularity, say, over the next year or so? Hank Fickle. <clears throat> exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I think the popularity of Jordan is that card is where it's at. But overall, I don't want to steer people in the direction of investment. I, you know, way back when, you know, I would always tell people collect and buy what you love and enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah. And if it's something that goes up in value, all the better, you know. But as far as, you know, collecting, you know, cards and enjoying the journey. I think that's a lot better than thinking in the back of your mind, you know, are there these rookies that are going to take off? Or yeah. So I, I was never, you know, a, it was never like a big proponent of, I was never a big proponent of like telling people what cards, you know, would, would escalate in value. I so, hear you. So, so in other words, Danny, you. you're not an influencer. You know, here's the interesting thing about an influencer. It's, it's so... You know, you have your people that advise, you have your people that will suggest, you care about certain people, you you respect their opinions. But, you know, to take the word quote unquote influencer, it means that someone is influencing someone else. Right. So if, if they're 
I kind of feel that in, the word influence is like I'm pushing you in a direction and pigeonholing you in a corner, whereas you'd, ra- you'd, you'd want to suggest or advise and, and give the background. But to influence, to tell, let's say, a group of a thousand people, and you tell a thousand people and 875 people are going to buy the card, of course it's going to go up in, in value because you're influencing them and you're saying there's only a thousand out there. Now, if you all buy it, you can all manipulate the market. You know, something. The problem with that also is that a lot of people that are being influenced and manipulated are young people. Absolutely. That's yeah. like the three of us are probably not going to be influenced. No, and I, you're right. right. You're, but you're 100% talking, right. They're talking young people that buy the young people that have some dough. You know, you know something? So, I, I'm yeah. going to use I'm going to use my grandson who is 10 years old, yeah. and he's he's on the internet all the time because he loves the hobby, yeah. basketball cards. Yeah, and we've had discussions because he'll go on and listen to a quote influencer <laughs> and call me up. My Italian name for for, for uh, uh, grandfather is Nanu. Yeah, he'll say Nanu. Such and such said that this was a good card to buy. Mm. And I said, Johnny, <laughs> don't listen to such and such. You know, because it's just, it's, uh, you, can, you can almost see it. Now, again, uh, there are influences that sure. are legit sure. and, and that are helpful. But you've got to be real careful. Danny, I want to ask you a, a question about third-party grading. PSA right now represents probably around 80% of the market, I would think, at least 80%. Of the of the authenticating market, with uh, SGC and Beckett, you know, a, a distant second and third. So the question is, um, why should I have my card authenticated by SGC rather than PSA when I know most likely that card is going to be more valuable if it's graded by PSA? And I don't want to put you on the spot. Talking in generalities here. I think it's not opinion. I think you take the numbers overall and would you rather make more money on your card or less money? And it's not, again, it's not opinion. It's the fact that the market, the market share is really cornered by PSA. SGC is a great company. You know, we sell SGC cards in our auction and they do just fine. And they're collectors out there that collect that comes to modern you know it's more psa and more beckett but as far as sgc sgc is a great company right. you know they have graders over there that are really dialing in you know the grade is really what the cards graded you know and psa has definitely tightened up the ship on uh you know grades where we would think something's a seven or eight and it comes back a five and a half you know, but I also think that even if you're getting a five and a half or a six, you know, with PSA in today's market and people understand the slip, the the cert number and know that it's a new grade, they it's more or less they'll I think they'll still bid, you know, a, a seven price for a five and a half, a PSA five and a half. So not, not I'm not saying that happens all the time, but I think it's there's still. You know, the newer cert numbers, I think, are still getting decent money where people are like, I can't believe I got a 5.5 when this looks like a seven, you know, and it's, you know, you tell the guy, the person that got the uh, 5.5, don't worry because they're, they've tightened up so much. And yes, it looks like a seven and it'll probably get a seven price from what it went for years ago. But I think PSA is just, they have the market share and it's what people love and they have a much bigger reach you know, but SGC is a great company. Interesting. We are chatting with Dan Wilkin from Memory Lane. Jam. I want to talk a little bit about, give you a chance to talk a little bit about Memory Lane as well, Dan. I mean, we've had it in the show many, many times. Memory Lane is one of those companies, Zap, that's, you know, one of those big, we put them up there with, you know, yeah. with the best in the business. Yeah. Talk about, you know, as, as a, a potential consigner, a potential client, What's your business model in terms of customer service, dealing with a client? You get something on consignment, you have to tell them what, maybe what they don't want to hear, or maybe you give them some great news. How do you guys go about that, that, um, that repartee and that relationship building with clients and customers? You know, that's a great question. I, what I want to do is I want to back up one second on, Tom, what you were saying about your grandson and that he was talking about influencers and now this guy. 
he might be right one out of a hundred times. And he might come back to you and say, but I told you so. But then you have to tell these types of people that there is a card that I bought, let's say for a hundred dollars and it went to $5,000. Okay. But the other 99 times that you invested money, you got crushed. So it's a misnomer and people should know they, even if two out of 20, you know, blow up at least that other 18, you're, you're batting nothing. You're batting so, Danny, I mean, I can't, I, I, I'm really uh, happy that you're, you're saying this because, you know, I'm not going to mention names, but I go on YouTube and I see some of these guys that have a million hits, a uh, million yeah. views, and they're real slick, very slick production uh, shows with, I mean, huge, huge backing behind them. And I scratch my head. I scratch my head and I say to myself, there's got to be an ulterior motive here. There has to be an ulterior motive. That's why, they're, and they're trying to drive the market. Yeah. Again, a lot of people may disagree with me, but I feel strongly about that. Yeah, I agree. That's called conism. So uh, <laughs> let's get back to like, you were, you were asking about memory lane. People call us all the time, you know, multiple times a day for consignments. We talk to these uh, customers of ours. I just had two brothers come in with a huge collection. Unfortunately, their father passed away. A lot of raw, a little bit of graded, a lot of oddities. We brought that stuff in. We work out, you know, how to break it up, you know, how everything is going to be um, kind of shown in the catalog. And people still love the catalog. You know, there are, there are some companies that have gotten rid of the catalog. Our job as an auction house is to present the consigners collection and cards to the best of our ability. And I think people want to hold that catalog still. So we're going to spend the hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, to, to get, you know, the best prices and, and to get this catalog out. But, you know, we charge X amount percentage wise, and we deal with pretty much pre 75 when it comes to vintage we will deal in the modern market. We will deal in newer, you know, memorabilia and stuff like that. You know, but it's it's so simple. Sometimes consigners come in and they're so worried, like these two brothers, you know, they were, you know, how are we going to do this? And I say, you know what? It is so simple. We've been doing this for 350 years. You know, this is something, you know, we do in our sleep. It's real. You know, this is what you what you pay. This is what this is how we break it down, how we present it. And We've been real successful at holding their hand through the whole process. I think that's what we give as a company. We're going to hold their hand through the whole process. They're going to have my cell phone Saturday night if they want to call it 10 p.m. I might not answer it, but they're going to be able to have access to us at any time. They won't call and say, press one for the operator. Oh, time The hours are closed. You know, No one's available now to take your call. I'm always available to take someone's call and to walk them through and explain to them to the second the auction closes and their item sells. All right, Danny Boy, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Steve Workman from Clean Sweep is going to jo join us. He has, let me tell you something, he's been on the show many times. This auction, this is his killer auction in my opinion. Hang in there, we'll be right back. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you are a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, 
look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport, Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's, the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field, and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, courting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions, here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. Hey, I'm Mike Petroselli. If your company is looking for the best in marketing and promotional items, you'll hit a home run with Petroselli Marketing. With over 8,000 suppliers and 650,000 imprint-ready items, we can get your company the visibility it needs to get your maximum exposure. Whether it be office promotions, wearables, automotive, sports items, and everything in between, Petroselli Marketing can do it all. Our design staff will even work with you from concept to delivery and customize your products. At Petroselli Marketing Group, we will get your brand in front of your audience. Contact us at info at PetrocelliMKT.com or call us at 603-880-3202. That's Petrocelli Marketing, where no dream is impossible. So, how does your company or organization do promotions? Imprinted Products keeps your brand in front of your customers more than any form of advertising. For the best on-time service and new ideas for your next project, give Petroselli Marketing Group a call at 800-264-4294 or email mp at petrocellimkt.com. Nice job. All right, this Thanks. is one auction that I am very excited about. Uh, our good friend, Stephen, welcome. Steve Verkman from Clean Sweep Auctions. Steve, you know, I had, the, I had the pleasure and honor of viewing these cards at the National uh, when we came by uh, with a little camera guy. And 
it blew me away then, but tell us about, you've got some rare, and I mean rare, Babe Ruth cards for your auction. Can you tell us about them? Sure. I mean, it's, it's the most, some of the best stuff we've ever offered in our auction. We have a Babe Ruth rookie card with a wild baking back. My understanding is there's only 10 of those in existence. It's an extremely rare card. We've had a huge amount of early interest in it. We must have had 30 different bidders on it to this point in the auction. You know, it's a really, really exciting card, completely fresh to the hobby. We sold it to a client 30 years ago, got it graded at the National, and you know, it's just a you know, real cornerstone card. The condition's not great. It's authentic altered, but it's a real card, you know, mostly because of the condition. But, you know, it's a real stunner. We also have a Collins McCarthy Babe Ruth, one of the great, great Babe Ruth cards. You know, he's a pitcher with the Red Sox because it's from 1917. It's a really, really nice looking conservative PSA one. We thought it would be a two, but we all know how these things go. Also freshly graded at the National, beautiful card. And it's interesting. Bid-wise and even bidder-wise, the two lots have been tracking each other. Like a lot of people bid on both, and they're at similar prices. You know, it's, it's a funny thing. So we're, you know, we got big expectations for that. We have some E121 Babe Ruths. We have uh, some really nice Gaudi Babe Ruths. We also have some really cool Joe Jackson cards. We have the Standard Biscuit. We have a Collins and McCarthy. I mean, there's some stuff that, you, you know, you just never see. One card we have that, you know, I'm really excited about uh, well, two we are, you know, more mainstream stuff, but great stuff. We have a freshly graded, gorgeous uh, PSA 6 52 Tops Mantle. Wow. So that, that's been a biggie so far. You know, it's at, you know, almost $100,000 with 10 days to go. So, you know, beautiful card. Another card that almost certainly would have been a seven three years ago. So it's a really, really sharp, colorful, fine-looking six. You know, again, freshly graded at the National, completely fresh to the market, gorgeous card. And we have a card you just, I haven't seen in years. A 36 Worldwide Gum Joe DiMaggio rookie card. Oh, His yeah. true rookie card, yeah. only issued in Canada. This is the kind of card nobody sells this card that has it. I mean, there hasn't been a public sale in years in any condition. So we have a you know sharp looking PSA 2. It's got some creases, but you know it's centered. It's got a great Good image. Question. You know, that's another hot lot. Steve, are these, are these all these cards? Did you pick all these up at the National? No, I, no. I mean, we picked up the the, the fifty two mantle at the national. Okay, but the rest of them, um, I you know, you. this is a couple of collectors who consigned to us, and 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 the, a lot of these were cards that we sold like twenty five to thirty years ago. You know, pre grading. Unbelievable. So it's never been on the market. Steve, I was going to ask you about that the uh, Dimaggio Worldwide Gum card. Can you give us a, like a little history, if you can, about Worldwide Gum and also the Standard Biscuit cards? Yeah, sure. Well, the world, worldwide gum cards are, you know, are, are a Gaudi issue. Gaudi, uh, the Gaudi gum company from Boston, you know, were the first cards to come with, with, with bubble gum. A lot of people don't know that. Or among the first. Widely distributed issue. And then they, they made them Canadian issues, too. So they made, in 1933 and 1934, they made a smaller set. Um, the backs are a little bit different. Sometimes they're bilingual and for the Canadian market. And they're, they're okay. You know, they have Ruth cards in them and stuff. And they've been up and down over the years. There was a time when they were really, really hard to sell. And like anything else, they're better now than they've been. In fact, we have one of the Babe Ruth cards in there. But for 1936, they made a completely different set for the Canadian market. The cards are black and white, but it's a much bigger set. And the set has a whole bunch of players that are, don't appear in any other sets or hardly any other sets. Like collectors of Hank Greenberg go nuts over that card in there. You never you never see this card. There's also a player named Weintraub. I think Phil Weintraub is his only card. So there's a whole bunch of there's a card of Joe McCarthy in there who has hardly any cards. Yeah. You know, then they have Dizzy Dean and guys like that and Jimmy Fox and you know all those kind of Hall of Famers. But it's a really, really cool set. And they're not rare, but they're scarce. But the DiMaggio is the absolute key to the set. I mean, it's just an amazing card, and you, you, you just never see this card, and when people get it, you know, it's one of those cards, you know, whatever you offer them, we're not selling this card, I don't care what the price is, I'm holding it, and that's probably the right move. Hey, you know, Danny, by the way, card. jump in, Dan, whenever you want, if you want to ask Steve a question. I, I, I know that you guys know each other. Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I'm excited to see your auction, because like you had said, it's great to have, you know, the Ruth rookie and the... The, uh, you know, the other cards you mentioned, I'll definitely jump in. And we always love bidding in other auctions, you know, people that, you know, we like and everything. And that, I think, is also a great, you know, thing that people, more auction houses should do with other auction houses. 
that if they see something that might be a bit low with 10 days to go, just jump in and bid on it. It strengthens our hobby. And if you win it, you win it. If you don't, you don't. But I think uh, working together, you know, with a lot of these auction houses, you know, you you help each other out. And again, if you win it, you win it. If you don't, you don't. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I'll use both of you guys as an example. The one thing I really like about this hobby is you guys are all competitors. There's no way you're not competitors, but right. you're all friendly competitors. You know, I mean, I see it. I see the interaction at the shows. I'm sure there, there are a couple of uh, uh, outliers there, but overall, it seems as though everybody kind of works with each other. Is that true, Steve? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we're competitors, but, you know, things are generally civil. You know, sometimes, you know, it doesn't mean you don't get angry when something happens once in a while. But, yeah, I would, there's definitely a community. And we, a lot of cases, you know, we do business with each other on different levels. We might refer something that's not for us to another auction house. Or like Dan said, if something's a good deal in another auction house, maybe we buy it. You know, so, yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, business that goes on between all the hobby people. Danny, you wanted to add something uh, earlier. No, I, I, I don't. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, Dan. Steve, no, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I just want, this is way outside the box right now. We, and we've um, got about three, I, three and a half minutes. Okay. Collecting wise, I'm going to make this really quick. And this is nothing that we deal in at all. Taylor Swift. She's as big as the Beatles. She's as big as Elvis Presley. She's getting bigger there. She as probably about three years ago on her website. She came out with signed CDs. They went for 12 bucks a piece. They're now at about 125. For someone, you know, John, you were asking me about an investment. For someone who wants to make some money, go on eBay, buy a couple of those signed CDs. They're now about 100 and a quarter. I've bought about 250 pieces, albums and CDs, because eventually these things are, if you want money to make money, they're going to be about 500 bucks a piece down the road because she's not really, you can't get a signature of her. All right. Yeah. And sign. Yep. So maybe something eat. That uh, you know, you pick up. So, yeah. so what about when she becomes Mrs. Feeling. Travis Kelsey? That won't happen. Yeah, well, <laughs> not going to happen. She she could do better. His autographs have gone up three times since the game yesterday. Unbelievable! <laughs> Everything, all his autographs, three x. Seriously, unbelievable. Hey, Steve, uh, what else do you have? Any non sports in this one? Yeah, we got some we got some cool non sports stuff, but there are a couple other cards I just wanted to mention. Yeah. There's a P two hundred six McGee era card and a really nice looking PSA one. We know a lot of people need that for their T two hundred six sets. You know, there's a forty eight leaf satchel page that's a really nicely centered PSA two. Uh, we have some memorabilia we've never had before. We have a we have some nice game used jerseys from Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera. You know, we have some bats. We have a whole bunch of different autograph material. There's an M1015 Jim Thorpe from 1916, another Very cool. card Very that you cool. never see. You know, there's runs of sets. You know, there's a really wide assortment of stuff. Just please make sure everyone knows the auction ends next Wednesday, October 4th. You have to have your initial bids in by 8 o'clock Eastern time. So if you're interested in the auction, if you want to register or if you're already registered, I throw that first bid in because you don't want to get shut out. You know, and we're, we're expecting good things. Awesome. Steve, you have a copy of Boys of Summer. Minute and a half. Signed by Jackie Robinson uh, in this yeah, auction. Oh, that's really I love your auction because I always find neat things like that. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it was funny because years and years ago, I, it's a crazy story. When I first did a show a million years ago, I remember in like 1989, I remember finding one autograph, the paperback version. And I, and I, you know, I, I bought it and someone screamed to me, no, you're an idiot. Jackie Robinson, they did, Roger Khan describes Jackie Robinson's death in the book. So then I'm in at someone's house and they have a really nice autographed book collection. So they show it to me. And I'm like, no, you're crazy. I remember this a million years ago. It, it can't be signed by Jackie Robinson because he, you know, he described, Khan described his death. But that was the soft cover paperback edition that, that changed the year after the hardcover one. So this is the first edition hardcover one. And, and you know, I was dumbfounded. So Jackie, of course, was alive and it was, you know, the year Jackie died. And that book is what set off the whole mania for Brooklyn Dodger you know, nostalgia Very and love cool, and right. war and started a whole a whole world. So to have that signed by Jackie Robinson is just, you know, it's just incredible. The whole the very interesting inscription. Yeah, that's one of my favorite lots in the auction. Awesome. Your website address, Steve? It's a cleansweepauctions.com. That's cleansweepauctions.com. And, you know, your registration, of course, is free. You know, just check our things out. And it ends next Wednesday, October 4th. You want to have your bids in by 8 o'clock Eastern time, Wednesday, October 4th. Danny, your website address? If you know www.memorylaneinc.com. We're still looking for consignments. We have about a month to go, and uh, that's all we wrote. 
Guys, I can't thank you enough. Uh, great show, as always. Awesome. You guys contribute so much. You both have contributed so much to the hobby. It's like crazy. Uh, just keep up the great work. JM? Yeah. Great show. Nice show today. Good to see you guys. Uh, special thanks to uh, Scotty yeah. Russell from the Collector Connection. Chrissy, thanks for a great job. And to our viewers and listeners, happy collecting. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.